not that it wouldn't bother me. Got your pretty flashy cars right up there, mateys. Literally have to hold the rope to climb the steps. I see daylight. Oh. Oh my god. Well, they had some advanced technology. A gorilla lad could have been an lad for anything, really. It was just a brilliant piece of finder's entertainment. And they managed to have a
Go and get it. All right, I'm watching, I want to say ghost stories. I don't even really know. I don't remember what it's called. And I'm near the end and I don't really know what's happening. But whatever, it's on, on in the background. I've got a video. Uh, exporting over there. So if I look and sound terrible today, that's because I have a cold. I also have a bit of a hangover, but not too bad. So uh, I just want to update you with uh, what happened with my holiday, and then I guess. Well, I don't know. I don't know how I'm doing this week's vlog anymore. I might do. I don't know. We'll see. I might do a separate video for my holiday and then pick up afterwards. So in which case, this might be the first thing you're seeing of this this latest vlog or whatever. But that works. Um, I didn't update you guys on the books that I read while I was away. I also came down with a cold when I was in, uh, what was it called? What was that castle called? Goodrich Castle. I had to check the fridge magnet on my fridge. So um, yeah, I'm back at home now. I played a gig with my friend Dave at the Anchor yesterday and uh, that seemed to go pretty well even though again I had a cold but I managed to sing my way through it. 
So I wanted to update you on the books that I've read. So while I was away, I finished reading the Backman books. So I'm actually uh, classifying this as four different books bound into one. The main reason for that as well is because, I mean, that is what it is. But the last one in here, The Running Man, I've already read before, so I didn't reread that, although I do like that uh, novel. So these are all books that King wrote as Richard Backman. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do full reviews of it all, I, I think. But, um, yeah, Rage was okay. It wasn't as, like, just because I know that the history behind this novel is that it's been removed from circula uh, circulation because it deals with a school shooting. Um, so, I don't know, that kind of legend around it was almost better than the book itself, if that makes sense. It was just an okay novel, and um, I think even when King was writing it, he was still developing his craft a bit. Having said that, I mean, I thought it was good. And we have The Long Walk, which was amazing. Uh, it's one of those that's... I gave it a 4.5 originally, but I'm now going to give it 5, because it's stuck with me since I finished reading it, and it just kind of... Yeah, just the whole thought of it, it makes me feel uncomfortable and unsettled. And I actually read both of those in one day uh, while travelling to the, the cottage I was in on holiday. Then we have Roadwork. And Roadwork, it took me a while to get into that one. But once I did sort of start to see where the story was going, I did enjoy it. I actually thought like the uh, kind of anti-hero character was very relatable. The only thing I have to, to say is that uh, I feel like it would have been better, better if it had been called Demolition. But... Hey ho. And then The Running Man, like I said, I've read, read, read that one before. And it's just a cracking kind of, almost a thriller novel, not even really a horror. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed all of those. Then I read A Modest Proposal by Jonathan Swift. So the idea here is that this is basically political satire, which is a good thing because his honest proposal was that to, to sort of solve the problem of the potato famine in Ireland, they should just have everybody eat children. Uh, so yeah, that was a bit dark, but I gave it four out of five. It was quite witty, quite entertaining. All right, I actually seem to be missing a book for some reason, but I'll pick it up later and uh, update you on it when I find it, I guess. But I did also finish reading June Messiah, which was a bedtime book. Uh, but I also was reading that as a buddy read with a bunch of people, including Mindy's Book Journey and uh, Graham Quigley and Luke Ash from Totally Pretentious. And um, yeah, I enjoyed it actually. I kind of, I think some of the others had complained that it felt a bit as though it was just bridging the gap, you know, between the first and the third book. But it did okay on its own as well. The only thing I didn't like was like the kind of the resurrection trope. I, I never like it when that happens because I think when a character comes back from the death, it kind of devalues death in a way I guess but I did enjoy the new additions to the legends and I probably would read the third book maybe for next January and then after that I picked up Bird Box by Josh Malaman because I want to watch it but I also want to read the book first so I have almost finished I read I read a good 300 pages of it so far mostly on the train yesterday and yes I am enjoying it I wasn't sure about it at first but um yeah yeah it's it, I'm enjoying it it's probably around a four star at the moment so that's about it for now. Um, I just made some French onion soup as well. I'm going to go back to watching this terrible movie and uh, suffering from man flu. So I will see you in the next update. Where's fear? So Finally watching Bird Box. Your loss. That sounds like bullshit to me. All right, so I may as well tell you what my thoughts are of this so far. I'm 18 minutes in. It's, it's already very different to the book. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> it is what it is. I did enjoy this. I gave it a four out of five in the end. Um, Basically, this edition includes a bonus short story at the end, which I didn't like much, and that was about 100-odd pages. And because I didn't know that that was in there, the ending kind of came out of the blue for me, because I thought I had 100 pages left, and then suddenly it just ended. And so I didn't much like that. And, uh, yeah, it was all right, though. I, I, you know, I enjoyed it up until that point, so I dropped it down to a four after that kind of experience with the ending, because I was expecting either, you know, another twist with... Uh, I don't want to give away the, the plot, but I assumed something bad was going to happen again, and uh, no, that didn't happen. And I also thought maybe we might get more of an explanation, but, you know, I don't mind there not being an explanation of what exactly the creatures were. So, so yeah, finished reading Bird Box. And the other thing I wanted to mention is this book, which I forgot. So, well, this is the one I couldn't find the other day. So this is Three Tang Dynasty Poets by Anon. Uh, it does actually say the poet's name, so I think... Yeah, Wang Wai, Li Po, and Tu Fu. So, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed these, actually. I'll read you one. I'll read this one. Old poem. Did Chang Chao dream he was the butterfly, or the butterfly that it was Chang Chao? 
In one's body, metamorphoses, all is present, infinite virtue. You surely know Fairyland's oceans were made again a limpid brooklet. Down at Green Gate, the melon gardener once used to be Marquis of Tung Ling. Wealth and honour were always like this. You strive and strive, but what do you seek? So yeah, uh, really enjoyed it actually. And this is like, this is old poetry, it says here. Pastoral lyrical verse evoking the rural landscapes and peoples of 8th century China from three of its finest poets. So very cool, I enjoyed that. I would probably give that a 4 out of 5 as well and would recommend that as one of the, the better ones in that series I've read so far. And now, I have just picked up Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury because I'm going to buddy read it with Graham Quigley. So uh, we literally, we mentioned the buddy we read a while ago. I remembered about it a couple of days ago and tweeted him. We said we were going to do it in February. So we're going to do it in February. Why not? So yeah. What are you doing up there? You're trying to get to the remnants of my stir fry? Look at what's happened outside. It has snowed. I'm supposed to have a driving lesson tomorrow. Um, but at the same time, I love it for the length of it because it is about the fleeting nature of life and how... Just watching Edward Lorne do his uh, Stephen King books that should have been Bachman books. Hooray, and my phone has finally turned on. Yes, I'm wearing a hat inside, it's cold. Um, I don't think there's any snow. There was a little bit of snow actually on the pavements yesterday. Yeah, there's still a bit, look. Anyway, so to bring you up to date over the last few days, uh, well, yesterday I went into London to, uh, I went on a date to, uh, and then went to see uh, War of the Worlds, which, right, so this, it was really interesting how they did it, because they had, part of it was the original, well, it was based on the Orson Welles radio adaptation, and so part of it was kind of that radio adaptation happening, and then it also came into modern times, and there was a girl who ran a podcast, and she was going to investigate um, this sort of family story, which I didn't think worked as well as the bits of, of the original broadcast, but it was kind of cool how they tied the two together. And, um, and it was kind of all relating back the idea of this big hoax that Orson Welles did with uh, fake news, and so there was a, this character in the future who was like running one of those websites that just makes up random shit. And uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting, definitely food for thought. And that's on at the new Diorama Theatre for a little while. I don't know how long. Um, but if you, if you Google it, <laughs> you can find out. And um, yeah, um, but the, anyway, the person that I was meeting, um, we did like a, a comic swap. So I gave them, um, I, Cats and Camera, you're like this. I gave her uh, the Omnivore edition of Chew. So it's like the bound up, I think the first 10 issues of the comic, because she's really into graphic novels. And uh, she gave me the Fade Out by Ed Brubanker and Sean Phillips. So I've just started reading that now. I'll read you the blurb, why not? It's got, it's got blurb by Joe Hill as well. Joe Hill said, A new title from the sharpshooters behind Criminal and Fatal is reason enough to go on living. So it says, Hollywood, 1948. A noir film stuck in endless reshoots. A writer plagued by nightmares from the war. An up-and-coming starlet's suspicious death. And a mogul and his security chief who will do anything to keep the cameras rolling before the studio system comes crashing down. The fade-out is the most ambitious project yet from the award-winning team of Brubacker and Phillips with acclaimed colour artist Elizabeth Brightvisor. And yeah, it does have really beautiful art. And it's very dark as well, so this is what I'm currently reading. She also gave me a little note, so it says... Dane, just a little note to tell you the reasons for why I chose this comic book. The main protagonist is a writer, it's set in the golden era of Hollywood, it has a murder mystery at the heart of the story. I love the drawing style and thought it was a great front cover. I thought that said font colour for a second. So yeah. Oh, and um, while we were in London, we also went to this place called Temple of Satan, which is like a vegan food place. So I have leftover vegan chicken wings. So that is my breakfast for today. Don't judge me. So that's pretty much what I've been doing. There's an open mic in Wickham tonight that I don't think I'm going to go to. I'm going to um, have a bit of a productive day. 
have a bit of, it's mostly clean and tidy in the flat actually, but um, just go over and make sure it is still all nice and clean for the week ahead. And I'm going to do some work and some filming and some editing. In terms of the other books that I've read, so I finished reading Ray Bradbury, Something Wicked This Way Comes. And uh, this was a buddy read with Graham Quigley. Um, some, like, some buddy read. I read it in like just over 24 hours. Sorry, Graham, I got a bit carried away. And this reminded me of, well, he said, he tweeted while he was reading it saying there's something about the writing style that reminds him of Harper Lee. And for me, it reminded me of what The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern could have been had it been written by like Shirley Jackson or someone. And I really enjoyed it. It's basically just this really sort of spooky, unusual circus and these kids go into it and all hell breaks loose. Uh, Probably like a four out of five for me, mostly for the writing style actually. Like, don't get me wrong, I did actually enjoy the plot, but I think it was more about the journey than the destination, that one. And then finally we have Kenko, A Cup of Sake Beneath the Cherry Trees. And this is one of the Penguin Mini Moderns, so it says, uh, Moonlight, Spring Blossom, A Woman's Hair, A Medieval Japanese Monk Reflects on Idle Moments and Life's Fleeting Joys. Now, if I've got enough battery on my phone, because I didn't have my sticky tabs with it, oh, there we go, sorry, I'm in shot. Because I didn't have my sticky tabs with it, uh, with me when I was reading it, I took a few photos of a few bits that I thought were quite interesting. It's not good to call on someone if you have no particular reason. Even if you go with some purpose, you should leave promptly once your business is accomplished. It is very annoying if a visit drags on. There is so much talking when people get together. It is exhausting, disturbs the peace of mind, and wastes time better spent on other things. There is nothing to be gained for either party. It is bad, too, to feel irritable as you talk. When you don't care for something, you should come right out and say so. Another quote. Overall, it must be said that those who kill or harm living creatures, or set them up to fight each other for their own pleasure, are no better than wild beasts themselves. If you pause and look carefully at the birds and animals, and even the little insects, you will see that they love their children, feel affection for their parents, live in couples, are jealous, angry, full of desire, self-protecting and fearful for their lives, and far more so than men, since they lack all intelligence. Surely one should pity them when they are killed or made to suffer. If you can look on any sentient being without compassion, you are less than human. All right, and final bit I'm gonna read out from this. There are seven types of people one should not have as a friend. The first is an exalted and high-ranking person. The second, somebody young. The third, anyone strong and in perfect health. The fourth, a man who loves drink. The fifth, a brave and daring warrior. The sixth, a liar. The seventh, an avaricious man. The three to choose as friends are, one who give, gives gifts, a doctor, and a wise man. So there we go. Now you know who to be friends with, kids. You learn things on Dane Reed's booktube channel today. Anyway, uh, I am going to go and head off for the day and uh, I'm probably gonna finish reading this, uh, the fade out. And so um, once I've finished reading that, I'll probably check in with an update on that and uh, we'll, we'll sign off. So yeah, see you in a bit. Okay, well I finished reading the fade out. It was very good. I would definitely recommend it if you're into kind of noir stuff, um, especially like noir detective stuff. But also um, the style of it was very, very noir, set in Hollywood during the Golden Age era. So again, if, if that's your cup of tea, definitely check it out because the subject matter alone will probably make you enjoy it. It was very well written, very well drawn, very well illustrated. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of five. Um, I don't know what would have made it get a five. I think for a five, it has to like literally grab up my heart, you know? So, um, but it was very good and would recommend it if you're into graphic novels. So since then, I have started reading Murder is Easy by Agatha Christie in this sort of dodgy old edition. Um, and yeah, I've already made a pretty big dent. I'm trying to hold it so you can see. Mm, something like that, yeah. So it's quite a thin book. So, oh, and I've lost my page. Page 44, I think I was on. So, um, yeah. Enjoying it so far. I'm... I'm still doing the setup really at the moment, so um, I can't judge too much until we start to get to the actual investigation. But yeah, I'm enjoying it and I will probably finish it tomorrow, I would imagine. But um, you'll have to wait until my next reading vlog to see what I pick up after that because I'm going to sign out from here. So, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.